What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Sh oh. Just kidding. It's Dr. Shadia Rafich here. Uh, we're going to talk about sunscreen. Yeah, it's getting warmer now, and um, people are going to go outside more, uh, regardless of quarantine, I suppose. <clears throat> and so I want to talk about sunscreen in animals, because it is a problem. It is something you should... I'm going to leave this on for the video. It is something that you should look into, um, and I'm going to give some information on it. So. Um, we do see sun damage in animals, um, dogs and cats, and it could be anything from uh, just a mild irritation or redness to the skin, just like a, a person, all the way to sunburns, which can be pretty severe, and then all the way to um, even skin cancer long term, and so and everything in between. And it, it pretty much follows the same sort of guidelines as with uh, as with people. So. What we're looking at with, with uh, sunscreen is a couple of things. We're going to talk first about some literature, some publications, some journals, research that's been done with dogs, and, um, and then we're going to talk about like, what you can do about sunscreen. So it's, it's been shown in, in a few studies, uh, mostly in hairless dogs, what the damage of sun can do. And they've tested both natural sunlight as well as UV irradiation. And it seems fairly clear that the um, damage is more extensive when you have UV light as opposed to when you have sunlight. Fine. Thankfully, most of our dogs and cats are not going uh, going to sun suntan booths to get their tans, so that's probably not as much of a concern. Um, but what is a concern is natural light, natural light, and it's been shown also in these studies that after about four days of um, exposure, consistent exposure, of course, that you'll end up with what looks like a suntan on the surface of, of dogs, these, these hairless dogs. And then by day seven, you've got significant damage. And that damage is, um, again, more extensive with the UV. Now, of course, there's no dog out there that's probably spending that, that much consistent time in the sun, and especially the high doses that they use in research. These dogs are exposed to, to radiation like this for a couple hours, for days in a row. And so, of course, that's excessive, but that's what we're looking at with the research. And so with um, animals that like spending time outside, like cats that are indoor, outdoor, or purely outdoor, or dogs that have free range of the yard that live in warmer areas of the world who enjoy the sun, it may be that they're in the sun for several hours for days and days on end. And so we wanna make sure we try to protect them as much as possible. The, it has been, it's been long thought that in veterinary medicine that the dogs that are at most risk for sun damage are those that have lighter skin as opposed to pigmented and those that have short hair as opposed to long hair. Hence the studies being done in hairless dogs. Actually, it's been shown in now in a recent study, 2018, in the Veterinary Dermatology Journal, that they thought that they saw a trend for dogs with dark skin and light hair coats to be at a higher risk of having sun damage. Now that was a, a small number of dogs, it's a clinical study, so um, there are plenty of variables they're not controlled for, but it is something to, to take into account. It seems that the common denominator are dogs either have no hair or are lightly haired, and that have short hair versus long hair. So at least that's, that's the case. It may not be that the lighter dogs, of the, the um, lighter, lighter colored dogs are at higher risk. It might be that actually darker pigmented dogs are at higher risk. So be it. So that's the science behind it. And we typically will see these burns in, in, a, in a real life setting. We'll see these burns on their bellies because lots of dogs like to lay on their backs when they, when they sunbathe. We'll see it on their muzzles or their nose. We'll see it on their ears, especially at the tips of the ears. Those are very common areas of, of having um, sun damage. But it, is, it, it can be occur anywhere on the body, of course. It just depends on the pattern that your dog or cat likes to lay in the sun. So that's the science behind it. Now, what can you do about it? Well, there's plenty you can do. You can, of course, avoid the sun, right? That's what we do with, with people. We say, okay, you know, minimize your time out in the sun, or if you do the whole suntan uh, bathing or whatever in an artificial, artificial light um, in, a t in a tanning salon, then, you know, try to minimize that um, or eliminate the exposure. And that's the same thing with dogs and cats. You can try and minimize their time in the sun, especially if they're in the category that I mentioned that's an at-risk group. Well, what if that's not an option? Um, what if you feel that you're impeding your pet's quality of life by inhibiting their exposure to the sun, or if you have a situation where the pet, it has to be outside or really enjoys being outside or whatever it is. 
You want to be able to protect them. You can use coverings, obviously. You can cover them with like dog clothing or cat clothing. Um, but of course, if they're in the sun, then chances are it's probably warm outside, in which case you don't want to overheat pets. Um, a lot of times we will see sunburn issues in animals in conjunction with heat stroke. And that's something that's very serious, can be life threatening. And so we want to make sure that if you're going to cover them up with like a sweater or a t shirt or whatever made for dogs or cats, that they make sure that, that the temperature is okay. So um, there's that. But of course, probably the most practical thing for people to do is going to be suntan lotion. And there's actually a, a, a website called goodhousekeeping.com. You can actually search in their site. Um, they have a handful of pet products that appear to be safe and effective for dogs with, uh, that you wanna use suntan lotion on, sunscreen on. And so you wanna make sure that you are able to apply the areas to the high risk regions of the dog. So their bellies, their faces, like their nose, the muzzle, the ears. Um, or you're gonna, you're gonna at least put the lo suntan lotion, screen, uh, sunscreen on areas that are not pigmented. So a lot of times their bellies or their groin area, <clears throat> um, their face are areas, their ears are areas where it is, it's not as covered as much, with as much hair. So let's say you have a long hair dog, um, but they like to be on their back. Well, just because they're long haired doesn't mean that, they're, that, they're, that their bellies while they're lying on their back in the sun is protected, right? So we wanna put some suntan lotion on there. And um, it, 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 is, it is assumed, of course, that these products are gonna be safe for ingestion because the second you put a lotion on a dog or a cat, they're probably gonna try to lick it off, right? So you wanna make sure that you really, really uh, um, uh, get the lotion in there and, and uh, not have like a, no, an excess amount of lotion on their skin. That being said, if they do end up licking it, it, it appears these products are safe, but I couldn't locate any studies looking at that. So we have to just keep that in mind when you place, place the, uh, the sunscreen protection on your pet, that uh, if they lick it, just look out for gastrointestinal signs, things like salivating, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, not wanting to eat, that kind of thing. Um, but <clears throat> until more studies come out, that's the best I'm gonna be able to do with that information. Regardless, the uh, downfalls of placing sunscreen on your pet are going to outweigh the, uh, the um, risks of it, of course, because if you've ever seen sun damage, it's getting hot in here. If you ever see uh, sun damage in animals, it's of course very sad, and, um, and the worst thing about it, of course, is that it's preventable, so. Um, yeah, and so I hope that helps you out there. Um, and be safe when you're out in the sun. Enjoy the enjoy the nice weather during these during these warmer months, and uh, stay stay safe. Um, if you have any any issues at all in regards to seeing a skin lesion on your pet, then of course best thing to do is you can either um, see your veterinarian or of course vettriage.com is a is a 24/7 video uh, video con uh, consulting site that you can use. All, all over the, the uh, United States and even around the world that can help kind of look at something and try to figure out how serious it is. There are many different skin lesions in dogs and cats and sometimes it can be very hard to decipher what they are just from looking at them without further testing. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, don't freak out with every single little blemish that you have on the skin, but hopefully this video brings out awareness on what to do to protect your pets against the damages of the sun. Thank you so much for listening. This is Dr. Shadi Rafidge, and we'll talk to you again in the next video. Take care.